for $10 million for some deleted lands. And then uh, again in 1999, McMillan Bodell applied to take lands out of the tree farm license. And they agreed with government that compensation had to be paid. They had an appraiser look at the land, and the appraiser said, if the film Bodell gets that land out, they should pay $18 million. And that deal was going ahead. But you see, back in 1999, the government actually did public consultation. They went out to hearings, and the public resoundingly said, no damn way should you take that land for the tree farm license. So that deal never went through. So in 2004, the students discovered uh, that there was another application to take that land out, the same $18 million land that the Bill had previously wanted, uh, to take that land out of the tree plant license. And uh, the students discovered a cabinet briefing note, which in the cabinet briefing note uh, from civil servants to cabinet said, uh, well, there's compensation payable for this kind of deletion. Uh, because of the fact that the government had given the company massive timber rights, and, and because it just makes sense to pay compensation uh, because you were undoing a contract for the company that already got a lot of benefit. And so the, uh, if you're deleting the TFL land, the government loses the, the TFL lands, the private lands that were, have been managed as crown lands for decades. And yet the company gets to keep its access to the far larger amount of crown land. So what we were looking at here with this most recent deletion was that the company got its private lands out of the crown managed tree farm licenses, and they got to keep access to the much larger area of crown timber. So as one of my students put it to me, she said, oh, you mean they get to keep their cake and eat it too. And that really kind of sums it up. So, the, the odd thing was that if the, if the government had sought compensation, as uh, the precedents indicated, uh, the government could have gotten Jordan River as a park. They could have gotten Sand Cut Beach as a park. There were a number of other resource or recreation sites in that land that could have been given to the government as compensation, but it didn't happen. And if government had, uh, had actually bargained to get compensation, they might have gotten land for the treaty processes, might have gotten land for environmental protection, and so forth. Now, the other thing that the, the students noticed was that, uh, that there was this curious lack of consultation. Because in the past, like in 1999, when government thought about taking the land up, David Perry did hearings all over Vancouver Island, and they got an earful about the idea of taking the lands out. Well, in this case, there was no consultation whatsoever. They didn't tell the capital region of this region. They didn't tell the public. But actually, there was some consultation because Western Forest Products told their shareholders months before this decision was made in their annual general report. So you see, your problem is that you're not sure if there's Western Forest Products. Otherwise, you might have seen this train running down the track. Um, but because there was no proper consultation, it meant that the Capital Regional District was taken by surprise. And when we went to the Auditor General with these concerns that students had discovered, that was one of the things that he noticed was that uh, this consult, lack of consultation had basically ambushed the Capital Regional District because their, their planning and their zoning had always assumed that these are just going to be tree farm licenses. That's what Justice Sloan always said about tree farm licenses. They're supposed to be forced forever. So they weren't ready for this type of thing. And as a result of the lack of consultation, we've had this terrible scramble where the CRD was rushed to, to put through bylaws, and, and then there was a press from Minister Chong taking a long time to sign off on those bylaws. And meanwhile, Western Forest Products rushed in and, and applied to subdivide. And then the courts overturned the hastily passed the uh, uh, bylaws that the CRD had passed. So the, the Auditor General, at, at any rate, uh, did take our submissions, which were made on behalf of uh, First Nations and, and uh, Woodworkers Unions and environmentalists and community groups and the Surf Riders Association. 
And as David briefly mentioned, the Auditor General did issue a scathing report saying that the decision was made without sufficient regard for the public interest. Saying that the Ministry of Forest put greater weight on assisting the licensee's financial restructuring than on other public interests. And amazingly, that the Ministry put public interest above the public interest. It's all in the Auditor General's report. And also, he reported, just incidentally, that in 2005 to 2007, the Western Forest Products donated $60,000 to the Liberal Party. <laughs> and, and that its owner, Brookfield Assets Management, donated another $50,000. And by the way, other forest companies that were getting lands out of TFLs donated a bunch more money. Um, and the report also had charts showing how Brookfield Assets Management, which is one of the great global corporations that manages over a hundred billion dollars in assets. Uh, how they own Western Forest products, our local BC firm, for bailing out. Uh, and it, it, go to Brookfield Assets Management uh, website. It's a great website. Look at their properties. And it's got all these great photographs of skyscrapers. Uh, and, and what it says is Brookfield Assets Management defining the skyline and then it flashes Washington, D.C. and it shows their skyscrapers there. Defining the skyline of Boston shows their skyscrapers there. And defining the, the skyline of Denver shows their skyscrapers there. And Houston, and Los Angeles. And they bought out a whole bunch of Southern California recently. Take the advantage of the housing crash. But they define the skyline of Minneapolis, and Toronto, and Vancouver, the Royal Center is owned by them. And defining the skyline of New York City, the largest high-rise development in New York City, an $8 million development being built currently by Brookfield Assets Management. You know, funny, there are no photographs on that website of Brookfield Assets Management defining the skyline of Brookfield. Or other point. <laughs> So, so we have this whole series of events, but, but I would urge you to remember what the Auditor General had to say. Mike. Oh, I would urge, yeah, sorry, I would urge you to remember what the Auditor General had to say uh, about this. And, and more than that, to remember that, uh, that to corporations like Western Forest Products and Brookfield Assets Management, these are skylines, these are real estate assets, you can put those real estate brochures on the web, that sort of thing. But they probably won't win that because to the people of Victoria, this is more than real estate. This is more than a commodity. Okay? This is our coast. This is the place where when we get tired of being in the city and walking on gray sidewalks, we go out to that coast and we, we throw a stick for the dog and we, we walk on the beach with our kids we do some beach combing and we take a look at the loons. We watch the eagles. And to us, it's not real estate. It's not a skyline. It's on the wild coast. And that's why we're here.